Welcome back to Shanky Garage. Now in this episode, gonna continue on with this tray. So I've got some struts I need to fit up. I've also got the renders back so I can show you guys what the top of the tray is going to look like. And I think it's gonna turn out pretty bloody awesome. I think it looks pretty sweet. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys that. And then I'll continu continue on with fitting the bracing. And yeah, once again, we'll just see where we get to with this episode. Okay, I ended up reaching out to a company here in Brisbane called Straight Cut Solutions. Now, the owner, Rob, he was more than happy to help out with this project. So he ended up coming around and measuring up all this tray and he's put it into CAD and done a full render of it. And that is including all the guards, all the bracing, the infill panels, everything. So he's worked out roughly, it's probably gonna be about 80 kilograms this tray. That is without the headboard. So I reckon by the time you put the headboard on, that's probably gonna be another five or 10 kilogram plus with all the bolts and everything. It's probably gonna be around 90 to 100 kilograms. So with that, Rob was able to work out the geometry of these struts and give me some recommendations on mounting points and the size of the struts. Without that, it would be probably a bit of a pain in the ass. You'd have to do a bit of guesswork and trial and error to figure out what struts you need and the positioning. So yeah, it's a good baseline to start off with. It's probably not 100%, but it will give me a good baseline to work with. And I might have to adjust where the mounting points are, just depending on what angle and stuff you want the tray to finish at. Now the struts that I've gone for are ones from IRS here in Brisbane. And these are GSK 60, 650N, so that's the pressure inside the strut, 525 mil overall. So that's from center to center, 525 mil long, 10 mil uh, rod, and then also 22 mil barrel. So yeah, with two of them, it's got a combined force of 130 kilograms. I've also bought these mounts for the struts and they're made out of stainless steel. And I've decided I'm not gonna use them. I was originally just gonna bolt them on, but I've just decided against that and I'm gonna weld them onto the chassis. So I've just made some out of steel. So I just used a bit of uh, square section and just cut some mounts out, drilled a hole. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna use them anymore. So I've already made up the mounts and tacked them in and you can just see here how I've done that. So I've just got one that's pretty much just hanging down. I've put a slight angle on there. And then this one here, that's your 90 degree. So yeah, she's tacked in, both of them. Okay, I'll just show you the operation with these struts. Now it's not too bad, there's a little bit of weight in it at the start, but once you get it over that pivot point, it's not too bad. So I can pretty much lift it up one-handed and yeah, once it goes over that pivot, she goes up by itself. And that is the final angle of it. So there's plenty of angle. I probably could go more angle, but I don't really see any point of going up any further than that. And there's still plenty of gap here anyway. And uh, yeah, she's holding up really nice by itself. Doesn't take a whole lot to pull it down. Um, there's not a whole lot of weight to sort of pull it down, but I'm hoping, yeah, by the time everything's on there and there's more weight, I'm hoping it's still gonna hold. But yeah, if it doesn't hold with the extra weight, I could probably up the pressure of the struts. Now these ones are 650. I could probably up them to say a thousand. I think they go up to 1100, so there is that option. Otherwise I could also mount them. So the further I mount them that way, thanks to mechanical advantage, it's gonna, yeah, support more weight. Uh, yeah, if you mount them further that way. So that is an option as well. So I'll just leave these struts tacked in for the time being. I won't fully weld them and commit to them. I'll just wait till all the tray is completed and it's at full weight and then I can see if she's gonna hold. And if I need to, I can yeah, mount them further that way or up the pressure. So just an FYI, to mount these struts, I pretty much just tacked in this mount here. So that is 290 mil from this edge here. And then once that was tacked in, I was able to put the strut in on this end and then lift up the tray to the angle that I wanted it and then supported it. And then I was able to, with this strut fully extended, just sat that mount in there and then tacked it in.
Okay, in the last video, I mentioned about the spacing in between the guards and the tire, which was 35 mil. And there was a lot of comments saying it probably wasn't enough. And I appreciate you guys, I took that into consideration. So I thought I would raise it up a little bit. It wasn't a whole lot of work because it was only tacked in. Um, and yeah, I just raised it up another 10 mil. So it's now sitting at 45 mil. I didn't really want to go too high because that gap here starts to get larger and this gap here stays the same. And I wanted the guards to sort of follow that tire nicely. So I didn't want to go up too high and I did measure the bump stops. So they're sitting at 40 mil, the bump stops and the guards at 45. So it's going to hit the bump stops first anyway. So I think, yeah, that's definitely going to be a lot better. 45 mil then 35 and to be honest i wasn't really happy with how the guards were sitting as well i put a straight edge across the guards and they were kind of um angling angling in on the top so the bottom was sort of kicking out a little bit so i wasn't really happy with that so it's definitely now they're sitting a lot squarer and it's nice and flat them guards when you put the straight edge across okay just another thing that i've done i've just welded in this angle so that's 25 by 25 and it's just butted up against the guard. I've just sprayed some weld through primer underneath it as well, just because once it's welded in, obviously you can't get it underneath there to paint it. So that's just to protect that. And yeah, that is gonna be able to weld all in there. And then I'll be able to put a piece in there, weld that in and just, yeah, get all that nice and smooth. So it all, yeah, transitions and blends in nicely with the guard. And then the infill panel is gonna rest up against that as well. I'm now ready to weld in all this bracing, but before I do that, I'll show you guys the design of this tray. So I got the renders back and I'll put them up on the screen right now. And a big thanks to Rob at Straight Cut Solutions for designing all this up. I think it's turned out awesome. Once again, it was a bit of a risk doing a tray like this, but I think it's gonna turn out really good. It is different, it's unique. I've never seen anything like it on a tonner before. So I guess continue on with this whole build. It is, you know, a one-off build, it's unique. So I wanted to do that with the tray as well. So as you can see, it's only just a tray. I still got to put the headboard on there, but I'll figure that out after. I'll continue on with that theme of the tray onto the headboard with the infill panels on the headboard as well. Yeah, would love to hear your thoughts on that tray design. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section. I know it's probably not for everyone, but I like it. I think it's gonna turn out bloody awesome. Okay, so these are the drawings for the tray and this one here is looking down from the rear and the panels will be in two sections. So there'll be this rear section and then there'll be a front section. There'll be a seam just here. You won't be able to cut it out in one piece. It'll have to be cut out in two pieces. So yeah, that's why there'll be a seam there. Um, these ones here, it's just a breakdown of all the measurements and all the bolt holes for each panel. This one here is the, I'm looking underneath, so you can just see the bracing there. So I can use that to work out where to put all the bracing. So I think some of the benefits in doing a tray like this is because it's bolted in, if I do get sick of it, I could easily get another couple sections cut out, like solid sections, just run a solid piece in there. Or it wouldn't be hard to just change the design a little bit if I wanted to as well. And then also if it does get scratched or damaged, you can just pull each section out and repaint it and then yeah, bolt it back in. You don't have to yeah, then repaint the whole tray. Pretty much now I've got to go around and just triple check all the measurements. I want to make sure all that is spot on because I lifted these guards up slightly as well. That's going to change a few things. So I just need to take some more measurements and then I can flick all that back to Rob. He can yeah, tweak it and then we can send it off to the laser cutter to be cut out. Right, oh, I've just tacked in all that bracing as per the drawings, and I just used 35 by 35 square hollow section. Just these two pieces here, I used 50 by 25. That's to allow a little bit more material, just because the seam is gonna sit on this piece here, and there's gonna be bolts either side of that seam. So I just, yeah, used the 50 just to allow a little bit more room for the bolts. Could have used 35, but yeah, it would have been pretty tight. So yeah, just used 50 there. And also these sections here. 
So the struts are gonna run along there. So I had to notch that out a little bit just cause the struts were gonna hit this brace here. So yeah, I just notched that out. I might fill that in possibly. I'll have a think about that. Okay, I'm now at the point I can fully weld this thing up and I'll do it off camera. I don't think there's any point filming the welding and grinding of all this. You guys have seen all that before. There's gonna be quite a fair bit of work in it. I've got these little sections to fill in here. I've got these sections to fill in as well. So yeah, I'll just start chipping away at that. Once it's all fully welded and ground back, I'll take all the measurements again and just triple check them again, make sure nothing's moved. And then we can send the final measurements or designs to the laser cutter and get them infill panels cut out. Okay, so that's episode four of the tray build. And this tray has become a bit of a mini series within this build series of the Tunner. So hopefully you don't mind. I understand it is dragging on a little bit, but I do like to go in depth with most things. So I'm just trying to make it as interesting as I can without it getting too boring or repetitive. So yeah, just bear with me. There'll probably be a few more episodes left on the tray. Still got the infill panels to fit up when they arrive. Um, I've got to figure out the latching system. I'm thinking about using some high strength magnets for that. I'm not too sure yet, I'll have a think about that. So if anyone is interested in getting any design or engineering work done, I'll put a link to Rob's website, so Straight Cut Solutions in the show notes below. And Rob also does a lot of stuff for four-wheel drives, so trays for four-wheel drives, and also canopies, and all the camping stuff for four-wheel drives as well. So if you like what I do and want to help support the channel, you can do that by subscribing. I've just gone over 7,000 subscribers, so I'm chasing that 10,000 milestone. So it would mean a lot if you could help by subscribing to the channel. Also leave a comment, hit the like button. And then if you want to help support the channel further, you can head over to the Shanky Garage merch store. I'll put a link in the show notes also. So there's hoodies, t-shirts, mugs, various products. And if you are new to the channel, I highly recommend checking out the playlist for this HX1 ton of build. Hit the card up in this corner and it's all in order. Very first episode all the way to latest. So I recommend watch it from the start. And with that, we'll see you next time on Shanky Garage. Cheers guys.